is the, the end result of the Vegas effect after, well, as it is used in conjunction with some motion tracking, some basic masking. Um, and essentially what the light trail does is it follows the, the red dot, a little secondary particle system pops out there where he goes up at the top there. So really there's a little bit of rotoscoping going on here in terms of matching up the, the trail to the hand. It's not the same kind of rotoscoping uh, that you looked at previously. It does use a mask but we're going to be looking at masks in a different kind of a way for this. Now before we move on to this specific effect of uh, the Vegas effect, I'm going to go through the, the basics of the Vegas um, effect. Alright, so I'll just create a new composition for myself. Call it Vegas Simple, uh, because I'm going to show you uh, how to apply and modify a Vegas effect a, more for kind of a graphic usage and then I'll move on to tracking that Vegas effect to the guy's hand. So Vegas simple. We're going to get a, a, a kind of a, a simple swooping light trail onto a, an ellipse and uh, first of all I'm going to have to create a solid. So the solid, much like with the particle systems, is created first. Call this one Vegas simple as well. Uh, click OK. Now this is slightly different in that when I drag the Vegas effect onto my solid, you don't really notice much of a difference. The solid doesn't disappear like it does with the particle systems. You have to go in and change a few more properties. Um, now you can't even really see the effect here uh, because the stroke or where the light trail is set to follow is currently set to image contours. Now image contours will be um, the outer edge of a graphic or a piece of video and if I have a mask applied it will follow the masked outline as well. Now what I want to do is I want to actually use a mask specifically for the purposes of creating a shape for the Vegas trail to follow. I'm going to use an oval. Now the end result it's going to swoop in from the left hand side and swoop off to the right but to set it up first of all I create the oval in the center so you get the effect working on the mask in a small scale and then you can upscale it then to, to change where the trail comes in. Now another thing that I can change here from the outset is the blend mode. Now at the moment it's set to over but if I set that to transparent and then it's only going to uh, show the Vegas trail and nothing else. Now it's still set to image contours. I can set this to mask path and then specify mask 1 as the mask that I'm using. Now the next thing that I'll do here is to make it visible. Now it, as by default it's a very thin yellow trail and it's also broken up into 32 small trails. So the first things that I'll change are the segments. Take it down to 1. Take up the width so that I can see it and possibly uh, change the length. Now, the length I can change after the fact. Now this is the Vegas light trail okay so in its very in a very simple sense so I can change that to white now and start playing around with it. Now to make this move you change the rotation. Now the reason I started with an ellipse is that it's a very simple way of visualizing how rotation affects the path of the trail. Because it's a circle, if I look at the rotation, it's rotating around that oval. Okay, so that's pretty simple and straightforward. But it doesn't have to be an oval. It can be a straight line and it will still use a rotation property to move along the straight line and then start from the start again, such as with this one. Now once I have the, the effect set up, if I want to change the size of the trail now and have it coming in from the left and kind of swooping along to the bottom, uh, first of all I'll change the length. So I don't want it to go a full uh, rotation. So at the moment this starts here, it actually goes all the way around and the tail, although it's very, very faded out there, it actually touches the front. So it's, a full, it's going a full circle around the oval. If I change the length, I can have a nice short kind of comet type uh, trail. Again the rotation will make that move around just as it was before. Now this is important. If you change the 
scale property of the solid, what you're actually doing is you're increasing everything. You're increasing the, uh, the size of the mask, the size of the solid. You're also increasing the size of the, the part or the, the trail itself. Now, if you want to just modify the, the mask itself and keep all of the same properties intact for the trail and not just do a kind of a quick and nasty transform everything up, you double click on the mask just as you were when you were rotoscoping and you scale the mask up. You'll see that the, the trail actually stays the same size even though the mask is getting bigger. You can move that up then and now when I uh, use the rotation you'll see that it now kind of does a nice simple swoop across without becoming pixelated or adjusted or uh, affecting the width of the trail itself. Now to make these things move you're simply keyframing the rotation property of the, the trail so I'll bring this out a few seconds and change that. Say again. Yeah, they go. So at the moment it's um okay, so where do you access the rotation property? You close that and open it again. And once you've applied any kind of an effect on a layer, if you open up the effects drop down, you'll see all of the effects that have been applied. So now if I go down to the uh, segment section here, you'll see that my two keyframes there. So it's keyframing the rotation and it'll play through then like that. So it's kind of similar to what we've been looking at previously, but the way that we're making it move along that path is slightly different in that we're actually changing a rotation property as opposed to picking up moving or moving along a motion path. Um, now there are other parameters here um, uh, worth looking at. So you have the hardness will give you uh, less of a kind of a blurry trail and a little bit harder around the edges and the, the start opacity will simply mean how faded down is it when it is at the front of the trail and then the end opacity will be how faded down is it towards the end of the trail. Now I won't go, we won't spend too long on that, it's just getting it set up and getting it moving really is the important part here. You can go and check all of these um, parameters uh, later on. Okay, so that's a simple one. Now let's say that we want to have the trail following some sort of a, a real object in real-time video footage. So again, it's just motion tracking. Um, so what I will do is I'll just delete these two and start this again. Now I've already tracked this particular piece of video. So if I double click this and go over here, I'll see that I have a uh, tracker 2 set up. And tracker 2 has been uh, worked on already so it's a nice smooth track that pretty much follows him fairly faithfully. Now what we're going to do here is we're not actually going to uh, use the tracking data to make the trail move as you might expect it to. What we're going to do is we're going to use this tracking data and transfer all of these points along this motion path into vertices on a mask. So we're going to create a mask with the exact shape of the movement of the guy's hand. Okay, I'll demonstrate that now. So I'm going to create a new solid and I'll call this a uh, Vegas follows hand. Click OK. Now there's a there's an order which I would like you to do this uh, purely because when I use a different order of applying all of these effects the computer tends to crash so the first thing that you do is you get that mask set up that looks exactly like your motion path here now first of all what I'll do is I'll toggle open my uh, layer that has been tracked I'll just close that up so when you have tracking done on a layer you have your motion trackers visible on the timeline as well and tracker 2 is the one that I used here so if I toggle that open, you'll see that all of the things that were changed when the object was tracked, or the feature was tracked, are here as keyframes. Now when the tracker is set to raw, raw means basically that I'm not going to go and apply this tracking data as I did previously up here. I'm just going to take these 
keyframes, copy them and paste them and paste that data into some other object that I need to modify using all of this data that I've, I've created whilst tracking. Now the feature center is the important thing here. This, the feature center is where the feature passed through along the movement of the hand. And I can take all of these points here and turn them into vertices on a mask. So I'll copy by selecting the feature center in the layer here. Everything becomes highlighted. I'll go up to edit, copy. Now I'll select my um, Vegas follows hand solid and all I need to do here is click once to create a mask go down to my masks in the layers toggle open the mask path property the mask path is going to take the data for uh, placing uh, vertices along this mask where the hand had been so when I hit edit paste what I get is a mask and you'll see the shape of the mask is the same as the uh, shape of the uh, the movement of the hand okay so when I now apply a Vegas effect to the solid and change it from over to transparent, select it to follow a mask, um, get this down to one, increase the width and change the length. You can now see that the Vegas effect is being moved along the mask that I've used or that I've created using the tracking data from the hand. Okay, so it's a little bit complicated to get your head around but this is basically just another way of creating a mask with a specific shape. I've taken the data from my motion tracker and I've created all of these vertices using that data. From here on in what you will be doing is you will be adjusting the rotation of the or the rotation property of the Vegas effect, keyframing it, and following that red dot. So as he moves down there, I follow him. He moves a little bit further, follow him. So I can uh, zoom in here. And this is where the rotoscoping comes in here. The rotation property is being changed to follow the guy's hand as he moves around and you'll have to do this very carefully because the timing is going to have to be adjusted so it kind of follows him fairly well there but you'll see that he kind of pops in and out the light trail is however following him now if I zoom out there you'll see an issue with this in that when it starts at this point in terms of its rotation the end or the trail of the, the Vegas effect is all is at the end of the, the, the cycle in a sense. So it's starting the cycle here, but it's ending the cycle here. The way that you can counter that is to keyframe the length. So if I keyframe the length here and bring the length right down to zero, for instance, and then pull this out and up the length, you can have the length only follow the distance from the first point where he moved his hand to the second point and so on and so forth. So between the length parameter and the rotation parameter I'll be able to get this trail to start as if it's just starting from nowhere follow his hand as he goes and I can change the length over time as well to make it shorter or longer depending on whether uh, the, the whether that's the effect that I'm going for. Now I have a uh, a version here with a little bit more done. Now again the tracking, I could spend a little bit more time in the tracking as you can see the red dot kind of popping out there but uh, it's just kind of time really to spend. So the length, you'll see that the length here starts at zero. The rotation changes to follow his hand, the length gets, gets a little bit longer, the rotation goes around more, the length gets longer again, rotate a bit more, elongate and eventually he gets to the point where the trail is at full full length as far as I'm concerned or as far as long as I want it to be and he's able to kind of move around freely then. Now the sparkles are just created using CC Particle System 2 and the, the shape has been changed from a line to a sparkle. Gravity has been set to zero. They've been given a particular lifespan, colors 
and that kind of thing it's fairly straightforward but it's timed in such a way that the the particle system just comes into being at that point where the the trail hits that point of the screen now as for the actual lighting of the background and all of that kind of thing um i'll explain what's going on here we have the particle layer here that's just the particles i can switch that off um the vegas effect that's the light trail i'll switch that off just so that we can see all the different components now the lit hand is made up of this layer and this layer has been uh, darkened the lit hand is a pre-comped series of layers where you're looking at a mask on a solid and basically the solid is being used with stencil alpha to just show the portion of the hand. This solid is then tracked using the motion data to the hand so that it follows. Now essentially what is happening here is that this particular version of track the hand has been lightened just using levels. So I've, I've made this hand lighter and then I've isolated it using a solid with a mask on it and that solid is then tracked to the hand. So it reveals the hand through the use of stencil alpha which we've looked at before and also follows the hand through the use of motion tracking data. And when that particular layer or pre-comped series of layers is overlaid on top of the existing track the hand it gives the effect of the light trail creating light on the guy's hand as he moves around. Now that is I know pretty complicated to take in just for me showing you up on the screen here so what I will get you to do is to get a get the light trail going and what we might do once you have the light trail going is actually focus specifically on the masking um, and how that's working in the next class because that might be something that you'll use actually uh, in in a lot of After Effects projects where there's light involved. Okay so that is the Vegas effect and if you can get the Vegas effect following the guy's hand for now then I'll be happy.